This is the dream. My favorite animals in the zoo are gibbons. Swinging like that, called brachiation, was not possible in my evolution sim until now. It took three major changes to the game's core systems, some speculative biology and a bit of weirdness, so let's just do it. Today I'll show you exactly how it all came together. For those of you new here, this is evolution simulation game The Sapling, my solo indie game project. There are scenarios tasking you to design an ecosystem that meets specific requirements, but there's also a sandbox where you can build your own algae, plants and animals, turn on random mutations and see how they evolve. As a first step, out of three, I'm adding two new arms, especially for swinging from tree to tree. Here you can see me modeling arms inspired by gibbons, Fun fact, they have incredibly long hands. But because such a large feature would be a waste with only one body part that can do it, I'm adding a second one for the arthropod branch. At first I was unsure what such an arm would look like, but fortunately a rewatch of Bibliridian provided the answer. In the configuration file for limbs, which is just a file you can edit if you have the game by the way, I've added support for a new field and set it to true for both these new arms. If you add them, animals will not sit on branches, which is already part of the game since the fight and flight update, but will hang from them instead. And now I'm adding hanging, I couldn't resist also adding hanging upside down like bats, for which I've added another field. Bats use special feet for this called tendons. But you might say these animals look kind of strange, and I agree. When hanging from branches, both bats and apes, and also humans as you can see, have their spines vertical, not horizontal. In an attempt to figure out what would be needed to allow vertical animals, I came up with two things. Building the animal from bottom to top instead of front to back, and revise the logic that checks which body parts should be counted as invalid because they are inside the animal. But when I had finished all of this and I started playing around with vertical animals, I quickly discovered that they didn't look quite right. Firstly, because the mount points are so far apart, it's nearly impossible to make a neck. I for now solve this by simply putting the mount points closer together, but this is really noticeable when you switch between the two spine directions. Secondly, my approach with building blocky looking creatures under the hood first, and then smooth them with the catmill clock algorithm, gave really weird looking results for the legs. I'm now hiding that a bit by minimizing the width of the bottom face. It's still quite noticeable if you know it, but this is already way better. But with about hanging from branches and upright postures, there's a delicious sidestep that I really need to take. You see, with all of this talk about animal movement styles, you'd almost forget that some animals don't move at all. Sessile animals, like sea anemones, are very much animals though, and they are upright. Therefore, I'm also adding a new type of food with a speed of zero. For aquatic animals, it's quite easy to imagine how these animals could live. They would just filter feed. So I'm adding a few new filter feeding mouths inspired by sessile animals. However, I noticed from all the responses here on YouTube that the more speculative evolution part of the game is quite well received. Let's think for a moment about what sessile animals would look like on land. So let's say we give the animal a juvenile form that can climb trees, for example because it's likely to get eaten on the forest floor, but attaches to one place as an adult. How would this creature feed? We would need a mouth that can snatch animals from a distance, but we have that with the ballistic tongue that was introduced last update. To make this idea even cooler, I've added a can hang upside down from branch statistic also to the sessile food, so you can really see it hanging in a tree waiting for prey to come by. And I know a lot of you are gamers, so before you ask it, yes, when the mouth is positioned on top, so it's pointing downward as the animal hangs from a branch, let's make the tongue hang down permanently. 
Okay, let's return to swinging through the trees. Last week we already discussed various movement types, like swimming underwater, swimming at the water surface, flying, but I've saved jumping from tree to tree for this week. This is because, while we don't immediately think of floating when we are talking about recreation, from the perspective of the game, it's exactly the same thing. You start in one large plant, you end in another, you need special limbs to make it possible, and a special animation needs to be played when it happens. To get this animation right, I studied Gibbon movement extensively. My best source was the video game Gibbon, and even more this prototype released by David Rosen, known for the game Overgrowth and also his other work on procedural animation which was super helpful to me. But when playing around with early prototypes, I realized that jumping from tree to tree most often happens in dense forests, and you're lucky if you even see it happen at all, let alone the takeoff or landing. So I changed my plans and decided to just animate the airtime. So what started as a simple idea, let's add gibbons, turned into a whole new set of features. And every time I follow my curiosity, the game grows in unexpected ways. And all of that makes me wonder, is that how you will play the game as well? 